Hello, and welcome back to Rails Quest. Today, we're going to look at author launch again. As you may have noticed, I've been on a kick showing you how AI can accelerate your design, especially if you don't have a whole lot of design experience. You can get something that's at least decently passable and that gets you moving on to building the features that you really need to serve your customers with your Rails app or scratch that itch, whatever it may be. I've demonstrated recently how to do that with plain vanilla CSS using the CSS Zero front end gem, which I recommend quite a bit. I recommend it as much as I can because I've been really enjoying using it. And it's a great starting point for your vanilla CSS for your Rails app. Let's take a look at how that works in a Tailwind environment. How do you use AI to aid your development of a front end that looks decent using Tailwind? Now I've shown this on the channel before, but it was definitely more of a, let's just see how fast we can get the AI to generate something, anything, we don't care what the quality is. So now I'm gonna take a look at trying to up the quality level. So without further ado, let's take a look at the code and we'll switch back and forth between the code and the app itself so I can point out some things with the way that it's structured right now. Okay, now we should see the big author launch website. And this is just the landing page. It has some copy. We can go into a page of the application and get a better look at things here. Here's our row of way too many buttons. Maybe we'll refactor that on the channel sometime soon. But that's not really what we're looking at today. What we're looking at is more the color scheme and the general theme and layout of the app. And how do you get your AI to design that for you in a reasonable and sustainable way, not just throwing a bunch of HTML together and then you have to go through each HTML page updating it if you want to change the styles, right? That's not sustainable. That's not the way that a human would write or structure a project. So there's several different ways in the Rails world that we would break down the user interface for a project. You might start breaking it out into partials or you might use a gem like view components. I kind of bristle at the word component because it comes with a lot of baggage from the React and the crazy JavaScript world. There's a lot of competing component frameworks out there, and the word has come to mean something a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna focus on the Rails partials aspect of that. And you can combine Rails partials with Rails helpers as a very basic vanilla, no additional gems approach to starting to structure your web application with, okay, I'm gonna use the forbidden word, component components of the UI. You're going to break it down into the elements. We have the page with a layout and we have a heading. Maybe we have a panel for some buttons and we have a box here, a card you might call it, that contains a summary of the project, right? So if you start thinking with that mindset, drawing mental boxes or maybe even doing a wireframe and drawing literal boxes around each of the units of your user interface. So start thinking like a designer and we can think like a designer designer and let the AI do the rest. This app is very much a work in progress, but we're gonna take a look at some of the current state of things. You can see I let the AI pretty much do its normal run wild, just write as much code as it wants to approach with the layout initially, just to get a feel for, okay, what does this look like? And am I okay with the general look and feel? So it created some tailwind colors, and I'll show you those in a moment. And it created a basic layout and it used utility class all throughout this thing. It didn't just automatically think, oh, I'm going to structure this into components or partials. It just vomited out the HTML that it needed to get done, the task that I gave it. And that's about what I expect out of an AI in 2024, at least. You can see we have a background, accent, primary, light, right? Accent, primary, dark, in dark mode. So it's constructing all these things from colors that are not you may notice they are not part of the default color scheme of Tailwind. So let's take a look at that. In config, tailwind.config.js, that's where Rails by default will put your Tailwind configuration. So what I did was I simply handed this file to Ader and I gave it an idea of the color scheme that I wanted and it created the color scheme you see here. Now let's refresh our memory where we're looking at on the author launch project. We're looking at the projects index page. So you can see this is where I've started to break down and break out 
some helpers that allow us to start sharing some chunks of Tailwind classes among the views. So you see I have a page layout class, a responsive container class, and I'm combining those two things together with the Rails helper called class names. And all that does is it joins all the classes together in the correct way and sticks them in this class parameter. And within each project, you can see I'm listing out each project and giving you the summary. Project title, paragraph class. Now, let's take a look at where those things are defined. I have a design system helper. And in actuality, this is an illustration of the work in progress that this is. I'm just playing around with it when I get the chance. Uh, I have an application helper where I started originally playing with these ideas. And I had the AI write out classes as I thought of the concepts. And so it put these things together. But I realized that since class names is by default already a helper that's included in your views, why not use it directly in there and take some of the complexity out of these guys? So the iteration after that was to simply have lists of classes. And if there are parameters, if there's a more complex concept in the application, more complex view concept, then I can pass a few extra options as necessary. So you see we have a normal version, a high contrast, and an accent version of this paragraph class. And that's just to cut down on the number of methods that we need. These could each be different methods. There could be more interesting logic that happens there. That's down to your taste and what will work with your project. So consider this a sampler platter of a few different ways that you can structure things. And I would love to hear about the different ways that y'all are structuring things in the wild also that are working for you. And finally, I'm going to show you this pattern that I'm also playing with. Again, this is attempting to do things vanilla Rails way. You might have your favorite gem and there are some good ones out there like view components. The nice partials gem is another one that I enjoy because it's a little closer to the vanilla Rails. But I'm trying to do this without additional gems just as an exercise. So I have a UI slash cards card partial and this is used on the home page. In fact you can see I use a few of these UI partials on this home page. I have a features section, a hero section, and a call to action section. And we can jump to for instance this call to action and let's refresh our memory on what that looks like. That's this little area with the button down here. And you can see that we lay out with the heading two class and the paragraph class, and we allow adding more content if there is a block. And we take advantage of that right here by adding that sign up for a free trial link. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. This is a very simple one. Let's take a look at a few of the others. This one allows you to render an array of features in a features section. So it iterates over the features and renders a card. That's the card that we're, we were looking at down here. So it gives you a more semantic view of how your page is laid out. And it allows you to share these throughout your app. I found that I've gotten a lot of mileage just with sharing the classes throughout the app. I would recommend going ahead and using that as much as you want until you reach some sort of boundary, be it maybe a little bit of logic that you want to share, or maybe even a stimulus controller that you want to share that goes with this chunk of UI. So that's it for my sampling of how to do a little bit of UI code design in your app and to coach your AI to use the patterns that you would like to use. So now we'll just look at a quick tip for how to make your AI adhere to your standards. I created a mark file that describes all the ways that I would like to approach doing the UI code in this application. And so when I'm using Ader, I can pass it the nice partials instructions file as a read-only input. And then I could pass it another view and tell it to add another feature. Take a look at the projects index page and try to break it out into a component that we can share that represents the card layout of each project in this index page. Use the instructions in the nice partials.markdown file to proceed. So let's refresh the page. We didn't break anything. Let's see what it did. So here it created this card component in exactly the way that we specified. I told it to create it like this and use a naming convention. And lo and behold, it did that and it adhered to our existing style class names. The AI does a very good job when you give it specific pointed instructions. Let's take a further look 
here's all the things that it did for us. It created a model representing the project card, and that was according to my instructions. Once again, garbage in, garbage out. It didn't need to create that, but it created it anyway. I'm glad that it was faithful to my instructions, but I may need to update the instructions that I give it to match the current way that I'm building the project. And see, we got a very simple and basic change in this nice commit. And with that, I'm Caleb Lape. Hope you enjoyed this episode and have a blessed week. I'll see you next time.